information about Radio London and what it can mean to you, contact Radlon Sales Limited, 17 Curzon Street, London. Do it today. Come Mayfair, 5361.
I, that's what I thought. I'd like to try it. How did you get in contact with them? Well, I knew that they were down. I, I knew they were downtown London, and they were all within two blocks of each other, the offices. So I just went down and knocked on the door and said, "Hello, I'm from Canada. I've been a disc jockey for two years, or I've, no, I've worked at a radio and television station for two years as a disc jockey and cameraman, and and uh, you know, and uh, eventually Tom Lodge gave me an audition, and um, I, I got used to the, you know the, the size of things in London, and um, I had heard of Caroline. I really honestly hadn't heard of the other two. So when Caroline accepted me, I, I mean, I was on yeah. the yeah. And then after the first period, uh, you, you went ashore again. Uh, what did you do on shore? You were shore. Well, the first few times, all I did was I went back to my aunt uncle's place with an exit and just kind of hung around there and, you know, sort of said, well, what do you think? How do you like me so far? And um, then after that, um, you know, met some girls and started staying in London with them and, you know. Yeah. And during the 70s and the 80s, it was uh, always grown in business pay. But how was it in those days? <laughs> Sorry. The salary in the, in the 60s was uh, yes. 25 quid a week. That's what we made. But we were paid, we were even, I, I was amazed because we were paid for our week off. So even though we weren't work working, we were paid 25 pounds. Well, the money of course in those days. Which was, it wasn't bad money, no. It wasn't great money, but it wasn't bad. But they, the thing was, they couldn't spend it. So you, you would go on the boat for a week or two weeks, your shift, and um, you had no expenses. You had a, a cigarette ration, you had a beer ration or a coke ration. Uh, all your food was taken care of. So you had no expenses for two weeks. So you only had expenses for one week. And then you'd come off the boat for one week. And you'd go to a nightclub or something, because that was the thing to do in those days, because it was swinging in. You'd go to a nightclub, for example, and the next thing you know, they'd, um, they'd say, oh, Kephas, yes, right here, Caroline, love you. Come on in, we've got your table ready. They'd sit you down in the front, for very, you know, best time. everything's on the house, just give us a little mention on the air, you know, not a, not, not a problem. Sure, no problem. So, you know, you couldn't spend money going out to a nightclub. You'd go to a, um, uh, a, a shop to buy clothes or whatever, you know, because Carnaby Street was big then. And they'd say, I recognize your voice. You're that fellow from Radio Caroline, aren't you? Come on in. Whatever you like, take what you like. Just give us a little mention on the air. So again, same thing. I mean, nobody was hurt. Nobody. I mean, we didn't count on it. So it was very difficult to see. <laughs> Okay. Right, the plans for the next few minutes is that we'll remember 3 o'clock on August 14th, 1967, because that for many will remain one of the saddest moments of their lives. Um, Mary will then take over for a short while, and then it's your turn. Um, obviously, it isn't possible for us to cover every, every aspect of the offshore radio era, and I'm sure most of you have already done that today. But if anybody else would like to say a few words, please be our guest. Um, if you can come behind this mic, it will help because we're recording this so that uh, some of the people who couldn't make it today in far flung lands will be able to hear it. So, it's a few minutes before three o'clock. Yes, indeedy. Um, here's a little package we've put together that will remind us of good times on Big L and the sad moment of its close down. I think you'll agree that the sentiments expressed apply to all stations and that their importance then and now affects all our lives. It certainly affects ours. Having said that, you can't blame any of those stations for the radio we suffer in 2002. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go back, way back. As the fantastic radio station it is today, because it's being chopped up at its prime and anything that happens like that, usually is remembered for years and years and years. So let's keep thinking about Big Al and all the tremendous people you've heard on the air, like uh, Kenny Everett and Dave Cash. I'd like to say thanks to Dave Cash too, because the Kenny Cash program was really a gas to do. And that's about it, really. It's just been a gas, and I won't forget it. I hope you won't too. Hi there, this is Dusty Springfield on Radio London. I suppose it's sort of sad, really, saying goodbye to all the people who listen to Radio London, and that's millions and millions, I'm sure. And I hope it won't be too long before we're all again listening to Big L. And my mum said this morning, actually, I was talking to her, she said, 
she doesn't quite know what she's going to do. She says she's going to putty without reading her London. So best wishes to everybody. And let's hope that we'll all be listening again pretty soon. Bye-bye and thanks. <laughs> We were left to wonder who could possibly replace the warm sounds of Big Al. For those who swore to Big Al, I'll stay by your side. It's been a long, lonesome road. When we listen to those old recordings, we hear a big little whisper to us, Baby, I love you. Don't you miss me a little bit, baby? We reply, yes, even after 35 years. who is the gentleman who actually believed my bullshit and gave me a job. I'd like to propose a toast to Emperor Roscoe, who is not here today. Um, what was I going to say nice about Emperor Roscoe? Oh, he was nice enough to leave the ship and give me his shift. <laughs> but that's for Roscoe. Did he leave you with a bird? Roscoe's no, he took the damn bird too. <laughs> Roscoe's a pig. Roscoe's a pig. Roscoe's a pig. He got that for, for hours, didn't he? Um, also, to Rick Dane, the Great Dane, the bastard never came back to the ship on time. I always had to spend an extra day because Rick Dane uh, never came back on time. So here's to you, Rick. Um, <laughs> Tom Edwards, who's uh, somewhere up north, who couldn't make it today. Tom, we miss you. We love you. Ian McRae, who's in Australia, teaching um, a whole new generation of uh, broadcasters how to be communicators, as well as voices. Communication, I believe, is the, uh, is the key to success. Roger Day, who's decided it's more important to be with his family in Portugal than to be here with us today. Here's to you, Roger. That's okay. <coughs> Steve Young, who had to stay at home with his... Uh, his um, recuperating wife. So here's to Steve, the dear and departed Bob Larkins, who was our newsman. Um, Bob wrote and conceived uh, the, that, that great show that we love so much, which was um, Batman's Christmas Caper, which uh, took place in 1966. Um, Bob Larkins was responsible for that, and here's a drink to Bob. Also to Jerry Burke. Um, Bill the Boiler Man, who's uh, up there in the Shetland Islands, we believe. Uh, here's to Jerry. Uh, leave the sheep alone for a while, Jerry. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to uh, propose a toast to uh, the good ship Mi Amigo. She's the reason a lot of us are here today. Um, I understand she is uh, resting at the bottom of uh, uh, the North Sea off the coast of Essex. Rusting. Rusting off the coast of... I wish I was a wealthy man. I would bring her, bring her up again. Anyway. Here's to all those people. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank Mary and uh, Chris for the for a wonderful uh, venue and a nice occasion. And what a location. London is perfect. It's my second time of being back, and I'd just like to thank our dear friend Ed Stewart for um, providing uh, providing with a job, as I found him out of uh, house and home at one time. Place to live. Thanks, Ed. And, uh, I had an uh, email from Alan Keane who uh, said to say hi to all the uh, the gang here today. He couldn't make it, and also Tony Brandon couldn't make it. And uh, thanks to Mary and her persistence, we found Mike Lennox. Yes. He's in Canada, and he uh, asked that uh, I pass uh, on his email address to anybody who uh, cares to uh, correspond with him. So I have it. Mary has it also. And uh, there are some pictures of Marshall White on the uh, various websites, if you care to look it up. Uh, I'd like to thank Tommy Vance for a wonderful um, accommodation in Docklands there. It's, it's, it's certainly up to my standards, and I do appreciate that. <laughs> and I appreciate him flying all the way back to Spain to, you know, take care of me. Look out for that. Dr. Johnson, mm -hmm. <laughs> good to see him today. Cardboard shoes and his, um, his lovely Brian and the famous hawk from Australia. And, Twiddles and dolls and diodes and whatever he does, and his charming wife. So anyway, it's a, it's a wonderful occasion, and it's, it's nice to be here, and I hope I can get back to another reunion. And I hope uh, this time I'll get to meet Johnny Walker. Yeah, seriously, the person who gave me the name Stu Park was Dave Cash. And he said, let's think of a different name. He said, Ed Stewart, that's fine, because I was Edward Stewart Mannering, as some of you will know. I was Eddie Mannering in Hong Kong until I had, we all had to change our names 
when the pirates started in case we were arrested. <laughs> and then we could reappear in court under our real names and nobody would give a, know who we were. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's why we changed our names. So I took Ed it up and then uh, Dave Cass said, hey, you see, saw me do this, you see. <laughs> British radio. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I became a stew pot, and I've still got it <laughs> slightly larger. But oh. thank you, Mary, and thanks for all the emails who are coming to the office. And, uh, oh. they, I, I didn't tell them I was coming here to this reunion today, but I did get them to put a couple of records in my program tomorrow, which I know you'll all be listening to between five and seven. No, no, Johnny. What's it like I've been working five days a week these days? <laughs> anyway, I've been doing a day in the life, and uh, it's not unusual, and I shall also hopefully be able to play Big Lil as well. So listen in tomorrow, we'll have a special Big L reunion of our own. I remember the days when we used to play The Bachelors 15 times an hour on Radio Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> I remember starting the radio station in an airplane going around in the... Oh, he's coming in now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell you, first of all, forgive the voice gag, but I've just had what most of the people have had over the last few weeks, this virus thing. So I, I sound sort of a lot, but that's okay. Um, I just, I have to say in all honesty that today has been amazing, and, and everybody tends at thing, dudes like this to say the right thing, how wonderful these two have worked, and you think it's the automatic thing to say. But I have to say that um, not having been to a major reunion like this, this has had a real effect on me today. I mean, a real effect. Because all of us people who have been in the radio industry at the beginning, who know what real radio is, um, obviously have similar feelings about the way the radio industry is going today. And I found myself standing at the doorway there listening to everybody coming up and giving their recollections of things and thinking, I just wanted to imagine KISS FM having a get-together in 2045. Ian, <laughs> 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 hey, remember when I said fuck on the radio? <laughs> 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 Sorry, Dave. Remember the say fuck and don't worry about it. It's only it was 2033 before we could say can't. It's terrible. <laughs> I really despair at radio today. However, and I've had this conversation with my PA, who is 32 years old, she's a very bright girl, and every now and then she pulls me to one side and says, don't be so bloody old fashioned, stop harping back to the old days. Um, I think it's fair to harp back a bit because there's, there is still a feeling in radio that there is a word, there is a magic word in radio that program controllers at the moment a lot of don't seem to understand what this word is, what it means, what it does, and it's a word called communication. Go! <laughs> and I am so sick and tired of seeing people going along, not only not communicating with the audience because of their pig-headedness, but not communicating with the people who work with them. And I always felt that if I want to work in a radio station, I want to walk into the station. I don't want to be patted on the back. I mean, we've all been there and done that. We've all paid the price. We've all got the, the bit of fame that we've had. And I don't expect people to come to me and say, hey, hey, great, I don't want that. But a little respect and just a bit of enjoyment when you go into work. And that is sadly lacking in a lot of stations today. So I, you know, I come here today thinking to myself that whilst we're all having a good laugh and a joke about this today, it's actually a very important occasion. And it's for me personally, it's been fantastic seeing so many faces. I mean, I've not seen Ronan for a hundred years. And then I'm, you know, various people are popping out of the woodwork, the Hamiltons, here, the big toes, Micah Hernes, Graham Webb, for Christ's sake. He was 43. And he tells me he's actually 51. Would you like that? Can you believe this guy? Just talk, you don't mind me telling him. Stand up, look around. This guy is 67. 67. Hello. I wish I'd looked that good when I was 67. <laughs> But, uh, I want to say that you guys, it's so good to see everybody here today. It's been a real pleasure. And I do reiterate that, unfortunately, we who are in the broadcasting industry are so up our own asses doing our stuff. 
that we, we wouldn't even stop to think about having a reunion. Like we, or we might think about it and then say, yeah, great, we must do that. And then go off to the next gig and smile. But it actually takes dedicated people to do it. So I do believe that you two have done a great job. And if you sell any CDs, <laughs> with all this conversation on I want to know about it first. <laughs> no, I think they've done a great job. And personally, as I say, it's so good to see so many faces and talk about radio when it was real radio. And whilst we all have to, on a final note, we have to modernise. We can't think back. It's not the same as it was. It never will be. The audiences have changed, they've compartmentalized, everybody's going for a specific audience and therefore it becomes narrow casting, but there is still room for people who just like to communicate and make an audience feel good. So, any of you guys want to stick with it, I think I'll hang in there for a couple of years till they kick me out. But it's lovely seeing you lot today. It's been